In this demo, we'll highlight the ability to search and discover data assets in Atlin. Atlin provides a Google-like search to all your assets in the organization, from tables to dashboards to queries and metrics. At any point in my Atlin experience, I can leverage the Command-K or Control-K shortcut, and I'm instantly presented with a search bar. Now, I could start with a simple search for data assets, like maybe tables related to consumers. The Atlin search engine also recognizes synonyms as well. So even if I type in consumers in my search, it will also return customer-related assets. As part of the search process, I can leverage the asset type filter here to be more specific around my search. For example, maybe I want to search on tables. By clicking on this, it will limit my search to only tables. Now, the real power of Atlin Search is in its personalization. The reason why it's important is because data consumers are diverse and they search for information differently. So, for instance, as a business user, I probably search by business metrics. I can search for one of these metrics like percentage of digital orders, and Atlin pulls all the data assets related to that. It could be tables, dashboards, databases, and more. On the other hand, data analysts are used to searching by SQL syntax. As an analyst, I don't need to change that behavior. I can search by that SQL syntax or database schema by simply typing in public.fc underscore orders and Atlin returns the relevant search terms. Now, maybe I'm even a data engineer and I like looking for assets with column names. Today, I'm trying to find all of the assets that have aisle ID in it because I'm working on a specific transformation that I, I really need this column. So I type in aisle ID and once again, the Atlin search flexibility makes it easy. Now we've done the shortcut method to search, but maybe I wanna see all of my assets in a broader context. I can also click search all my assets here or go into the assets tab. Once there, you'll see I get a similar search bar with all the same capabilities, but you also get a more robust experience. The one thing that's unique about Atlin is our search and filters aren't generic. And what I mean by that is they're specific to the data source that you're working with as well. The way Tableau defines components of their assets is different than the way Looker does. Same thing with Snowflake or Salesforce, for instance. And the only reality in any ecosystem is that diversity. So every connector, tool, data source is slightly different. Tableau has a concept of calculated fields and dashboards. Whereas Power BI, as you see here, has things like workspace. And if I go into Looker, it has a fully different concept called Explorers. And so Atlin creates a truly personalized search experience for your data stack and ecosystem. The other thing you'll notice is that as I change data types, similar to your experience in Amazon, the left filter and sidebar change as well. For instance, when I click on a table or a view, there's an associated table view filter that shows up on the left side. And this lets me filter by row or column count. If I look at a column, I get the column filter on the left side and lets me go into deep things like data types, or maybe there's a primary key available. Now, with any search, how do I know if that asset that I find is one that I need and one that can be trusted? Atlin presents the most trusted assets first in your search returns. And this green check mark indicates that this is indeed a certified asset and can be trusted for my analysis. Atlin takes that trust a step further through alerts and announcements. In some of the assets, you see a red or yellow indicator. What this means is there's some sort of detail around that asset. Could be an alert, it could be an issue or an announcement. This helps me understand that, hey, there's something going on here that's related to the asset and I can determine whether or not I should be using it. Finally, this little decision tree icon means that there is lineage associated with it. That means that, hey, this asset is affecting something upstream like a table or potentially even downstream like a dashboard. Another way to find the most relevant asset is to start sorting by parameters, like popularity, 
which can tell us these data sets are the most popular, or I can even search by rows, or maybe I'm looking for the largest table. Finally, Atlin allows you to personalize your viewing experience to your personal preference. For example, I typically like to view the context of my asset card that you see below, and I want it to really only include descriptions. While maybe my colleague who's a data governance manager, she likes to see classifications in her cards. Or maybe even my data engineer likes to get a glimpse into the connection that's feeding into these assets. Now, we talked about search, but when you think about search, think about going to Google. You go to Google when you know exactly what you're looking for, but sometimes looking for a data asset is much more difficult. It can be much more like going to Amazon or an e-commerce browsing experience. And what I mean by that is maybe I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking to see if somebody in the organization has previously worked on churn analysis as an example. And this is where the Atlin browse experience comes in. It provides another level of granularity to help me refine my search even further. Now we talked about how the filters change based on the asset type. So let's explore what we mean by that and, and what these tabs actually are all about. The certification tab is about the trust that we talked about earlier. This helps me search for only verified assets if that's what I want. The next one is all about ownership. This is similar to how you search for shoes on an e-commerce site. Maybe I know that someone in engineering sent me a dashboard in the past. So think of this as searching on a shoe brand, for instance, like Nike. But maybe I know my colleague Andrew is part of engineering, so I can filter on him as well. So Atlin provides the flexibility to search by both individuals and groups. Or maybe I'm in finance and I need to examine some customer information for compliance purposes. I'm working on reports and I want to make sure I'm looking at the data that has all the PII information in it. Once again, this is simple to do in Atlin. Next is the business glossary. This contains all the associated business terms across a multitude of categories. As I highlighted earlier, this is where I could filter on that percentage of digital orders term, and it would bring up anything that had digital orders term in it or related to it. This can be really helpful for me as you know, I deal a lot with dashboards, so I can look at all the dashboards that have digital order metric associated with it. Now you can also explore properties and filter by things like titles, descriptions, whether there's an announcement associated, or maybe I'm an analyst and I want to look at what's the most up-to-date asset. I can filter by when it was last updated. But one of the things that all of our customers like to do is filter by lineage. And this will bring up all the assets that have lineage tied to them. Maybe you want to do some analysis on a table and you know the asset is a large table. It has over 100,000 rows. Searching for that in Atlin is easy. I can click here type in 100,000 rows, and it will bring up all of the tables that have 100,000 rows or more. I could even go to that next level if I know that it's a certain size. Finally, Atlin gives you the ability to look at things like data quality status, or maybe is there a visual query associated with it? But I can also filter by custom metadata. So if I'm a data engineer, I can start my day by going into Atlin to see how my data pipeline has performed. I can look at my DBT assets by freshness status. You know, I can look at run status. I can go in here and, and pull up all the things that have failed. Or maybe I want to go into airflow and look at my DAG run status and see where I'm at with all of those assets. Now I've done all my filtering. I've narrowed down my search around my assets and I'm left with three tables, three snowflake tables. But how do I know which one of these is right? There's no certification tied to them. Simply knowing the name or description may not help me answer this question. This is where the Atlin Companion sidebar comes in. It surfaces the context and trust signals that I need to find the right asset to use. For instance, if I want to quickly understand which asset might contain useful information, instead of having to click into that asset link, I can easily click on the preview to see who the owner is of the asset. I can get that description, related business terms, and more. If I want to get a sample of the data in a table, 
I can click on the row or column, get that sample to pop up. And maybe I'm an analyst and I want to do some quick analysis testing on it. I can even download that sample if I need to. Or maybe I want to go into columns. I see all the column names, how many columns there are, and I can even search and sort through these columns if I need to. Finally, more information about lineage. I'm presented with all the upstream and downstream assets. And this is really all about lineage for discovery. It lets me understand how many other assets that a table is driving, for instance. All of this information will provide me more confidence that this data set is probably the most useful one. Whereas when I click through the others, I can see that there's less detail information associated with it. So you can see when searching and discovering assets in Atlin, you have the flexibility to be as specific and as granular as you need to support and find the diversity of assets that you want.